If you had a chance to change one thing in South Africa, what would that be? The land. The land. The land. What will you change about the land? The land. People must own the land. People must be able to plant on the land. People must, must, must... I'm not saying everybody is a farmer, but for those that have inclinations, for those that have the passion, for those that don't have the means to own the land, but have the passion to, to, to farm, I am saying people should be given the opportunity to farm. People should be given the opportunity to farm. Yes. But uh, farms or the land does not belong to our people. How do they farm on it? My brother. Yes, sir. It's nice meeting you. Likewise. You are the first South African farmer that I'm interviewing. Thank you so much. You're so, welcome. So please, since he's the first one, I want you guys to do this for me. Like the video, it's very important for me. Share the video because I want his story to inspire many South Africans. My brother, the thing that I read on the internet is that it's so hard for black South Africans to own land in South Africa. Yes. Is that uh, true? It is uh, because, uh, look, if you are to own um, hundreds of hectares for you to be productive and economical, it will, for you as a worker first, because remember most black mm. come from being a laborers. So it may take you 400 years, ne? but there are programs in South Africa designed to help people to start. Okay. Um, some of those programs are favorable. Some of them for a normal South Africans, they won't be even be part of. So, in as much as the government tries, it's still hard as a South African, like South African at that, to actually own a piece of real estate in South Africa. Real uh, estate? Yeah, as in, as in land. Land, oh, yes. okay. As okay. in land, yes. Uh, my name is Ntlantla. Um, I'm based here in uh, Springs, which is just on the east of Johannesburg. This is where I am now doing farming. Uh, which is my passion, first passion actually. Um, and I, I guess this is what we need from the youth. Okay. People to identify their, uh, identify their talent when they are young, mm. when they have energy. Mm. Not to find farming when you are retiring, because that seems to be an operative weight for most people when they retire. Mm. So it means that for black people to own a piece of land, they need to retire first and actually have a lump sum of money to then buy the land. By that, by that time, they don't have the energy, they don't have the know-how to actually run. But if they started young, like for instance, my kids will be in a better position if they pursue farming yeah. or farming related uh, uh, careers. So what is important is for us as black people to, to learn and make sure that we are able to think on a higher level mm. and, and change the narrative and actually make sure that future generations are, are secured of their future. This is how it works. The way I look at it is because people cannot bite the soil, they have to find a mechanism to get the energy from the earth with all the trace elements that are in the soil transferred via the conduit of a plant that we eat to get that energy. Hmm. So when you know that your plants have been fed right, no pesticide, no um, uh, illegal fertilizers, you know that you eat from the goodness of the earth, which is the earth that you, has been provided by God. So that's what, that's what future farming holds for people in the world. Uh, we know people cut corners. Mm. As they cut corners, there are diseases, there are issues that crops up. So we need to get back to reality whereby we actually farm from the basic. So which means that you are doing an organic farming then? It is organic. Um, there is nothing. Uh, that we take out of uh, the ordinary. We use organic fertilizer, mm. chicken fertilizer. Mm. Um, we don't use pesticides. As you saw there, there are herbs that we've planted. So those herbs help 
for the for the help repel um, pests. Uh, pests, for instance. Um, and really, from from that perspective, we 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 never have to use any uh, insecticide to attend to any pest. Growing up in South Africa, knowing that farming was not a thing for black people. What really inspired you to say that, you know what, I want to be a farmer? My grandfather used to take me to his, um, to his work and he was working for a white man. Mm. Uh, he was jack of, of, of all trade basically because uh, where he was, it was in a beach, it was a beach um, setting, like um, it's, a, it's a house next to a beach. So this beach house was owned by a white farmer in a place called Hawick and that's where they will spend their holidays so my grandfather used to take care of that so he would cook he would wash he would do everything hmm. in that house so what inspired me was to see the guy bringing meat in big containers and put it in the fridge and he will tell you it's from his farm then I said mine but uh, I've never seen a black farmer as in like but this guy is doing it. Hmm. So that, that story inspired me to say, I would one day wish that my children, if they want to have a holiday, for instance, they just come and book my house in the beach uh, because they are working hard wherever they're working. They may be working and staying in the United States, but they know they've got a beach house in a, in a certain area. Which year did you start your farm? Like, I mean, the dream that you had, which year did you actually make it into a reality? Look, um, I have been farming for a longest time. Mm. It's just that my farming uh, has been not termed farming. You know, like uh, farming, uh, when a black person farm, it's normally like uh, peasant farming. It's more like uh, subsistence farming. So I would say I've been doing subsistence farming in my uh, youth days. Uh, I used to enjoy planting cabbages, planting carrots for the local spazers mm. and uh, that's where I used to take my produce to. In actual fact, when I do it now, it seems like the same thing again because that's what I'm basically doing at a much more bigger scale. Of, we, of course, the aspirations is to do it on a 200 hectares, 500 hectares, a thousand hectares to mm. make sure that uh, we feed the nation. How many hectares are you doing right now? Currently, I own a 3.8 hectares. It is a, a good start, but uh, it's not good enough to attend issues at scale. So I'm hoping one day I'll get an opportunity to actually farm at that scale. I, I, I want to know, was it difficult acquiring this land? Um, at that time, it wasn't difficult uh, because I had the capital. Uh, so smaller lands uh, years back were quite affordable. Uh, right now these lands are more expensive. Um, just a, a normal piece of land, uh, you wouldn't get it at the price that I bought it from uh, those years. I feel like you, you're not just growing crops, you're also wearing like animals. This is so beautiful, man. Yes, um, a, a farm of crops is not complete without the animals because the, the, you have to employ the whole ecology of farming. Okay. You must farm holistically. For instance, with the ducks, I know that when I'm finished with my harvesting, I can put the ducks, they can actually eat everything, mm. and uh, it becomes less work for me to remove all the weeds, all the stuff, <laughs> and uh, it's actually good for them because they take that energy and put it into them, and then we eat that meat. Uh, premium meat at uh, that. Oh, what kind of crops are you growing in here? Um, we've got onions uh, because we plant per, per season. Okay. Uh, this is the winter season. So we, we, we have onions right now okay. that we are putting down, that we have put down already. Hmm. Um, but normally our main crop is paprika in summer. Hmm. Uh, that's what sustains our operations. And um, we've recently added um, aubergines or eggplant. Uh, eggplant is good because it's got a number of uses including for vegetarian uh, people 
uh, in, in later years, we would like to see how we can convert the eggplant into a flour. Hmm. A flour that you use uh, uh, on your normal cooking. Because from the eggplant, when it's dried and, 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 and processed, you can actually make nice cakes, uh, nice breads uh, that are, are, are gluten free. So uh, for people who've got gluten uh, issues, uh, when they eat this type of uh, um, a flour, uh, they'll be able to eat it with uh, no side effects. The kind of farming that my mom and dad used to do, in terms of irrigation, they depend on the rain. Yes. Are you also depending on the rain? No, not at all. Not at all? Yes. Uh, we, we, we basically depend uh, on our borehole system. Um, we, we get water from the aquifers down below. Okay. And this, this area uh, is, is well endowed with water. Water is not a problem at all, which is one of the blessings we have. Um, because as you can see, uh, this whole area becomes waterlogged. It just becomes water. But basically, water here is not an issue at all. So what has been the issue is to actually move water, to actually move water from the borehole into the plant. It requires a lot of resources, it requires a lot of system because when you pump and irrigate, you need a certain pressure to be effectively be able to spread, mm. spread the, the water into areas that you need for the plants. In the past, I've been using uh, drip line irrigations. Okay. It was good, but it became a problem for me because um, my guys, you find that uh, it, it means a lot of work for them. So I have now employed the jet sprinklers, which are, are, my, are much better. Um, what's good with the drip line uh, irrigation is that it applies the water onto the actual plant. But you have to monitor it so that it's not clogged. And we used uh, gravity as yeah. pressure, uh, which was quite good. So with the new system we are using, it needs pressure, it needs electricity. And uh, electricity is a problem in our area uh, because if I were to put, for instance, a, a solar uh, pumping station, mm. they will steal the panels. They will steal it? <laughs> yes, this is the power line. You see that space, that square there? Yeah. That, that, that used to be my transformer that I bought for more than 40,000 rands. Don't tell there. me it has been stolen. It was stolen. <laughs> <laughs> because I can't see. <laughs> it was stolen. It was stolen. But it was stolen twice. It was stolen twice. I first put it in 2007. It was stolen. There was cables going up all the way to my farm. They, they cut all those things down. The second time around of that transformer was my neighbor when he came. Uh, he didn't know of the area. <laughs> Uh, and we had not talked. So he, she came and put a second transformer. transformer. It was stolen. I've told myself that this area, for any form of energy, it would have to be a new invention in which I'm able to, 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 to get in uh, energy. Solar is a good one, but I'm looking at wind at the moment, mm. um, probably for converting into electricity. That's the windmill, then? Eh? This is the windmill uh, that we, we've got. It actually helps, especially in summer, in winter, uh, when there's no water. It pumps the water up into the tanks, and from the tanks we then irrigate all over. All over cross. Yes. This is where my farm begins. Oh, wow. Yes, and uh, the name of the farm is called Isildege Farm. That's it's, the... That's the your name? No, Isildege is a Zulu name for a nest, a bird's nest. Wow. We've started with cabbage this year as a winter crop. Hmm. And it looks so beautiful. Yes. This is how it looks from this angle. Hmm. So, uh, after farming, what do you take the harvest? We take it to the market. To the market? Yes, uh, Johannesburg. It's very market. demanding. 
Uh, the Johannesburg market has a great demand because it supplies the whole southern African region. So uh, there's ever a great demand for things like cabbage, uh, spinach and so on. Um, it caters for a wider uh, audience. Audience. Yes. So this is the, the, the test field that we had this year. It's a paprika, which is a different version or different variety from the normal paprika that we grow for the market. So this type of paprika is the one that is used for the spice, for the spice paprika. So it has to uh, be dried and then after drying it's grinded into powder mm. to the normal paprika spice that you know from the, that you cook with. I'm, I'm hearing paprika for the first time because <laughs> where I'm coming from, oh, we say it's pepper. <laughs> no, that looks so good. Can I touch them? Yes. Uh, See, I, I love I love being in farms. You know, okay. this is a big. I'm a big fan of. Okay, it, 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 it's like you've already harvested them. Yes, we've harvested some, and this uh, this crop has been left. Uh, we're just gonna harvest because we are coming to winter now. Okay. So in winter, uh, paprika doesn't do well. Mm. Um, so these ones, we're just waiting for it to just get that extra red and then, and then we, we dry yeah, it. So we dry it up. Yes. Yeah. For cool. Yeah. So in the, in the, in the following uh, year, this mm. coming uh, summer in South Africa, we'll be planting um, almost this whole field. How does it feel anytime you see your crops growing like that? Uh, you know, sometimes they say you get crazy because sometimes I come at night and uh, I sort of walk around <laughs> and appreciate the beauty yeah. uh, and everything. So uh, I believe that uh, when you are working like this, you become one with nature. And uh, to see them grow like this, it actually fulfills your soul in a way. It's like you're growing more vegetables then. Yes. More vegetables, more uncommon vegetables, that's all What good. do you mean by uncommon vegetables? Vegetables that uh, normally locals do not eat. Uh, I premium at my farm because uh, theft and stealing uh, is the order of things around this area. So I, I've, I've always asked myself, what can I do uh, to eliminate the theft issue? And one of the strategies that works for me currently is to actually plant stuff that the locals don't, don't, eat. <laughs> don't normally eat. And uh, I can assure you it is working. I employ all the farmers who are in the same predicament than me because this type of activities can actually derail your dreams and you can actually think that farming is not good for you. Hmm. But if you take strategies like that, let people who've got security a farm with spinach and all these other crops but for you if if people are stealing from you all you need to do is to plant a, a premium crop that is uncommon like i've been showing you i've, I've planted uh, asparagus now and uh, we hope to achieve good results they don't eat that yeah <laughs> <laughs> parents i appeal whoever is a parent Whoever is a, 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 a father, a mother, must think of the future of the generations to come. It may not be in the field of agriculture, it may be in other fields, but it's important that we create such opportunities for, for our future children. Are you doing farming as a full-time job? Um, unfortunately, not at this stage. I so wish uh, I, I can, but uh, you have to balance the scale based on my history. Uh, to actually manage because you need to live you still need to put food on the table and as we uh, try to claim our space into this economy of South Africa you still have to balance the income issues versus to the future sure. so um, I am a, a part-time farmer of which I so wish that uh, I can be full-time but I also need to provide for my family. So as I start with this journey, mm. I have to ensure that my children, my future children are provided. And I see this as a gateway, as a, as a, 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 a link towards them having such opportunities in the future. Since you are a part-time farmer, I just want to ask you this question. Yes. A corporate job or entrepreneurship?
entrepreneurship anytime uh, but you must remember and entrepreneurship comes with a lot of dedication hmm. because you see what tends to uh, put people on the corporate uh, side is the fact that they are guaranteed of an income at the end of the right. month so with entrepreneurship you have to think out of, of the box and actually uh, lead a life that will ensure that whatever money you get it sort of create an income stream that comes in even if you are not at your particular job you know so farming basically creates that environment for you because even even if i'm at work i know that production is taking place mm. uh, at this stage so which means if i employed people that works for you then yes i do so far how many people works for you in here i currently have three people okay. that work for me uh, or that we work with <laughs> and um, um uh, they've aided uh, i've changed their life in a way wow they, they've they are changing my life as well because i also learn from them so and as an entrepreneur it's important that you don't become uh, overheaded and and think that you know it all oh. uh, as, as a human being you always learn so whatever the lessons that people give you, you must receive them, interpret them, analyze them, and see how they add value to you, basically. The, 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 the current farming methods that you see uh, the white man that has, you know, uh, involved and make it like modern agriculture, some of these uh, started way back uh, in Africa, uh, like I said, places like Mapungube, mm. where villages were, were, were doing this modern uh, agriculture, they were farming to feed the whole village. It was not uh, what we see today in Africa where the family tries and feeds itself. So the buttering system, for instance, that used to take place. Yeah. So you plant maize, I need maize for my chicken. So I plant cabbage. So we'll exchange before the money issue came. So these systems were there. So the actual money actually, <laughs> in a way, uh, was a curse hmm. because it came with a lot of negative issues, including the saying, uh, money is the root of all evils. Evil. <laughs> but they wouldn't say maize is the root of all evils because people were able to trade, trade. using those, those systems. So those systems were good. Even the, 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 the gold and diamonds that you see today hmm. that Africans do not have, they actually emanate from us. What then happened? The white man saw us, okay, you see here, these people are actually wealthier than us, but we can far surpass them. All the diamonds, the gold that is mined in Africa goes to the vaults in the UK, in, the, in all the, the, the Western countries, and they stock them as their securities. And they'll give you money, money of which you can, can lose value. But gold never loses its value. Diamonds that we have originally from our land. That doesn't mean that an African doesn't know its value. Africans need to, learn, need to learn and appreciate the value of land because with land you get all these intrinsic, all these values that are coming in. Whether you're looking at earth, you're looking at the surface, you're looking at on the on the on the on the skies. Africa is rich. Do you know how impressed I am? Yes, sir. It's winter. Yes. And whatever you're growing on the ground still grows. Correct. So which means that it's a blessing to be an African. Definitely. Uh, it's a blessing to be an African in so many ways that at times we think being blessed is to drive those posh cars. Being blessed and wealthy means living in great suburbs. But being able to breathe is the wealth that uh, has been passed from generations to generations. Uh, so this is my apiary. Okay. Uh, this is where I keep my bees uh, from a city like a farm. As uh, I will, today, you'll actually taste the actual honey produced from these uh, bees. Oh. Yes. Uh, last but, night, I actually harvested for you. Oh. Yes. But do the bees come out? 
Yes, they do. It's just that today it's cold uh, and they're not uh, coming Oh, okay. Out. Uh, come on, it's cold, man. Come, come, come this, uh, I, I want them to run away. <laughs> um, okay, what, what happens? You see here, there are yeah. no bees now. Okay. It's always wise when you work with bees to, to work at the back. At the front is occupied. So come this side a bit, please. So as you can see, I left that honey from last night. Okay. A, a honeycomb just for them because it dropped so I just left it for them they will actually eat that honey or take that honey into the hive they will take it back yes including the comb they will eat the the comb and take it into the into the into the hive for, to create their honeycomb so um, it's always uh, when you've got honey in abundance you can actually feed them uh, the, the honey, honey itself would... yes so what do they eat then Honey is their food. Oh. Honey is the f is what, what we eat as honey and think it's our food. It's actually a, a, a food made for the bees. So the way the bees were designed, they were designed for the actual um, um, to withstand times that they don't have food, food. which is winter. So in, they, they work the whole summer to put together the feed that will last them the whole winter without the feed because what happens in winter all the vegetation around comes to an end so your normal flowers that flowers during the summer mm. in winter there is no flowering these are concrete hives now normally bees are farmed in boxes like wooden that. wooden boxes like that okay but it's very costly to actually buy a box or build a box uh, compared to the concrete hives. Mm. Now, concrete, it's just the soil from the ground. You mix with cement, yeah. uh, you cast it onto a, 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 a mold, yeah. and then you take it out and it becomes a house for the bees. We use an aggregate material called perlite. Perlite is used commonly in all agricultural space, mm. either for uh, to, to aerate the soil, mm. they use perlite. So we mix soil with perlite to actually uh, make sure that in winter it is warm, in summer um, it is cool. Yes. And cool. Uh, these bees will never run out because they always find themselves at home. So whether mm. it's winter or summer, they don't, they don't need to abdicate the place because now it's winter. Mm. So um, we, we, we have less absconsion or less uh, swarming in the, in the bees language. Very sweet. Mm. <laughs> I feel like the one that we eat is mixed. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> Um, um, as you can see, one of the very helpful uh, uh, tools that I have is my Chinese walk behind tractor. It actually does wonders for me because I don't need people to plow and use the hoe. We just use that machine okay. to, to plow the, uh, basically all my lands. We use the, the machine over there. Yes. I, I can see like... Um Free range chickens? Yes. Uh, we've got some free range chickens and we specialize in black australops. And uh, black australops are very good chickens as they produce uh, quite a lot of meat. And uh, they are jewel purpose breed. They actually also give you nice uh, eggs. <laughs> it's always the same type of farming everywhere. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that agriculture is the future? Agriculture is more than the future, <laughs> actually. Um, you, you, can, you can just uh, see from the, the every morning when you wake up, I'm not even talking food. You, you wear your, your shoes, you go and, 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 and have a bath. All these are agricultural products. Soap, for instance, you can make from the bees. Are you aware of that? Yeah, can actually make soap from the comb. Um, um, th there's just so much in agriculture 
that on our daily basis, sometimes we take it for granted Branches. that it is agriculture that clothes us, feeds us. Is it profitable? Definitely profitable. At scale, definitely profitable. I encourage the youth to enter the agricultural space to look beyond even uh, 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 agriculture and say, what do we do as a mechanism to actually empower other youths who may not be interested in agriculture? Do you need a lot of money to start farming? <sighs> Can I just explain? Because this is a, a sore thorn in most people. They say, I cannot start uh, uh, doing agriculture because I need a lot of money to do so. So one of the strategies, one uh, I, which I can advocate, is to actually uh, have a side hustle that will fund your agricultural dreams. Mm -hmm. Have some activities that generate income on a monthly basis mm -hmm. that will then fund operation in your agricultural mm -hmm. space. If you just run cold face into agriculture, you may be shocked because you can see your money, you know, almost like Forex, where it just disappears. But it's important to have a backup of a side hustle, uh, to actually uh, have that cash generating, uh, to plant into this type of uh, an, an activity. Mm. Then it will be an easier or a better way of managing your agriculture. You can start at a small scale and scale up. It's possible, mm. uh, say 100 chickens. Mm. You, you sell them, you take the profit, you plant it. You see, one of the greatest mistakes that youth does is that when they invest and they see the cash, they take that money and party. They take that money and buy clothes. All the, 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 the fashion, the labels. What is important as a farmer is to say, rather than buying a Louis Vuitton bag at 70,000, what input can I do to the farm? That in return will give me back more than 70,000, you see? So it's important to invest in the farming activities, to invest in yourself, empower yourself with the knowledge, then you'll be sure to succeed. Where can people reach out to you? Well, I am available on the socials, uh, that being on Facebook as Ntlantla Zuma or Isil Lege Farms. Mm. Um, I'm, I am also on Instagram as Isil Lege Farms. And uh, yeah, th those are the main channels. And of course, maybe uh, Wade will help me uh, fine tune my YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, hey, you have a YouTube channel too. Yes, I do. Really? But, uh, but look, it's something that I, I've created and um, I, I am growing in it. Uh, it's called Isil Dege Farm uh, YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, I've posted a few of my uh, harvest of honey okay. uh, in it, but um, most people, don't, of course, don't know about me. No, 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 no. <laughs> Since Warama is here, you have to know about him. So this is what you're going to do. The link will be in the description. You all should go check him out. And you know what? I, I think I have to give you uh, an assignment yeah. that as soon as I live here, yeah. start posting it. I yeah. mean, inspire more youth to join the agriculture journey man because i feel like the youth of today don't know the importance of agriculture i would say i've had quite a number of um, um, uh, african brothers um, um, they normally say south africans are lazy i, I think it's a, a notion that needs to be changed because south africans are hard working like all like all other That's nations precious. basically there, there are South Africans who wake up 4 o'clock in the morning and, and make sure that they feed their families. Uh, South Africa is today like this because of black people who've been waking up early morning as domestic workers going and working uh, in the white neighborhoods. Even today it's happening. So the notion that uh, South Africans are, are lazy, I think it's a fallacy and people need to get into South Africa and really understand South Africans. Uh, how do we do things? Uh, I, I'm here. I'm, I, I woke up at four this morning. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, I was working. I, I'm, it, it doesn't even register to say I'm lazy. It, it means that there is work that needs to be done. Maybe the notion may be right when people are not having land, they are not working. They may be seen as people who are not who are lazy. But give the people <laughs> land, let the people work. People will work. I think it's a system that was created by the apartheid government mm. that has affected because it's like you, you don't you don't own land, so definitely you don't have anything to do. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I want to say thank you so much for talking to me. I really appreciate your time and I wish you all the best, but I'll be back again in summer. Thank you so much. Thank You're you welcome. so much. You watch thank my videos, right? I, I, I'm your fan. Ah, Number one fan. Yo, I, I never knew I got fans from South Africa. So if you're from South Africa, you watch my videos, let me know in the comment section. And listen, I love you guys, man. Yeah, and um, don't forget to subscribe and be part of the awesome family. I'll see you all in the next one, man. Go check out his YouTube channel and subscribe too. My name is still Mr. Ghana, baby. You're one and only annoying village boy from Ghana. Peace out. Yeah.